everyone, it's Ross. I want to talk to you guys today about squash and melons and cucumbers and kind of that whole family of different vegetables. And what I've chosen to do with a lot of them is grow them vertically. If I if they grow in like a viney type thing along the ground, you know, not necessarily the typical like zucchini squash or even the patty pan squash, which this is. Uh, melons, cucumbers, even the tomatoes, we're growing them vertically. And it's really been helpful, I think, with disease, um, having better quality fruit as well, keeping these things maintained and growing a lot of food in smaller spaces. I think that really works out well. And you can see on these one vines, you know, here's a kabocha squash right here. Uh, this thing took a bit to get going, but it finally got going. We also have, you know, just a crap ton of butternut squash on this one vine and it really isn't taking up a whole lot of space. It really isn't. Um, you could let this thing go on the ground and this thing would get massive. I can already tell. I mean, the thing grows so vigorously. I mean, look how big these leaves are. So growing them vertically like this seems to really be helpful and beneficial. At the same time, if you go over here, we have fruits like melons and we had our cucumbers over here and there's there still is some watermelon as an example over here. You know, here's another watermelon right here. Um, and we have a couple, you know, cantaloupe and the musk melons that are growing back on this side. You can see this guy's off really not to the best start, but maybe this fruit here will set. And this guy's actually growing quite vigorously. In fact, he's all the way up to the top of the pole. I need to string him up, but so far, no fruit set. And my buddy Adam is growing melons right along with me, and he's growing them vertically as well. Um, he's got them up against a trellis. Really beautiful setup that he has. He puts a lot of work in. Really makes things look nice. So shout out to Adam. Um, but what he's noticed with his melons anyway is that they form on these uh, laterals off of the main shoot. So if you train this as a single stem plant, as an example, like it is, and I tie this up all the way up here, and I take out all these side shoots that come off, this is where the fruit is. This is where the female flowers are. So it's important to have this male, the male flowers along the main stem, as you can see. But you got to keep some of these offshoots to get the fruits, to get the the fruit set. So Adam really, who really pays attention to his plants, noticed this. Makes a whole lot of sense because I'm noticing it here um, on almost all of my melons that they're growing, even though these watermelons here are growing off of the main stem. I think the melons themselves, like the, the cantaloupe and the musk melons here, I think this right here is actually a type of cantaloupe. Let's see. This one's Eden's Gem, so I think that's actually a musk melon, if I'm not mistaken. But you can see another one back in here. And without a doubt, uh, the fruit set has not been good. Growing them has not been easy. Uh, a lot of them have gotten wilt because we had cucumbers over here as well. And this is the last year I grow cucumbers, guys. I'm done. Uh, because I really want to grow melons and the cucumbers attract the cucumber beetle and then the cucumber beetle goes nuts on those and it really destroys the the rest of the crop the rest of the plants the rest of the melons because if the cucumbers get wilt the cucumber beetle then spreads the wilt to the melons and then they all get wilt and I just been fighting wilt this whole time fighting the beetle this whole time when I could be having quite a few of these melons. In fact, I may, I probably should have even some melons already at this point. Let me take you guys on a little stroll here because we're gonna show you guys the difference between some that are growing vertically, you know, whether it's the, the melons, the cucumbers, the squash, right? The kabocha squash, the butternut squash. And then I'm gonna take you guys over to some melons that we just planted them by seed. Well, actually, we transplanted them out, my mistake, but um, we put them along the ground. 
So they're not trellised up vertically, they're just growing along the ground. And some of these are, it's just a huge difference here, guys. I mean, look at all these leaves in here amongst the figs. It really is kind of taking over this whole area. And there's a watermelon back in here <laughs> that's just taking over that whole area. But look at this, this is crazy. And if I come in here and show you guys some of these fruits, you know, there's like five or six melons on these, on these vines um, that are actually are getting pretty close or reasonably close. This one looks like it's gonna fall off. We have another one right here. Um, so the, the set on some of these, and this is a variety specific. This is probably, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is Minnesota Midget, I think, the variety here of, of uh, musk melon. It's a very early variety that was bred for that purpose, I think. Uh, recommended by Amy Goldman, for sure in her book but also this melon back in here is just taking over the whole area and it's really enveloping these young figs actually kind of helping to cool the soil maybe so they can get a bit more growth but it's gonna rather have the soil really warm but you can see like look at this this is a pretty sizable watermelon here and it's really taking over this whole area these watermelons they're everywhere um, they're even coming down over here in this direction, which is kind of nuts uh, because we planted them actually over there. <laughs> so it's quite a big difference and it's good to experiment, I think, with growing things vertically. I'm still unsure, honestly, what I'm gonna do in the future, uh, if this is worth it or if growing them vertically is worth it. I know, I'm trying to find more watermelon here, by the way, I haven't really, found too many of them to be honest with you but both of these are very early varieties and I'm not I like, guess like I was saying I'm not entirely sure what the best method here is you know should I be growing them vertically every year or should I just let them sprawl out along the ground like this there's actually yeah there's another watermelon over there that's got really good size so that's good to see but I don't know I have to put more thought into this guys I have to put more thinking what I know for sure is that a lot of these plants, guys, um, you know, it's just a, a, a matter of environment. What is your environment that you have set up? You know, definitely if I'm gonna grow cucumbers again, which I'm probably not, they're gonna go somewhere else. So, you know, they're gonna be so far away from the melons if I am growing them, that the beetle can be in its own little place. Some other thing that I noticed from a friend so he, plant, he planted amaranth and underneath that was his cucumbers and all of the cucumber beetles ate up the amaranth and didn't eat up the cucumbers. Although they did eat, they did have some bite marks in them so it's not like they completely ignored them but they did for the most part completely ignore them. So maybe I'll throw underneath the melons maybe some amaranth but at the same time probably put the amaranth somewhere else man. I, I don't want the the beetle over here, you know, I don't want something attracting them to that, that crop. Um, so again, I don't really know what to do, but I'll tell you this, I think growing them vertically is good, but it's certainly much better in a greenhouse setting when this is more controlled, less humidity, less disease, no pest pressure for the most part in those greenhouses. Um, yeah, this is a better system, but so far growing them in the ground along the ground this year has netted me more fruits. But if you look at this and how much space this has taken up, it's a lot less space than what we just looked at, you know? So if all these melons ripen, one, two, three, maybe on this one I get maybe up to four if we're, if we're lucky, you know, five, and then maybe this vine back here, or that vine back there. I mean, there's a potential for a lot of fruits off of these vines in a lot less space. So I don't want to give up on the whole idea just yet, but there needs to be a different approach next year for sure. Whether that's getting rid of the cucumbers, planting the amaranth somewhere else. Also, I think transplanting them a bit later in the, in the year and covering them with surround um, when you first put them out. I think it's really gonna help, especially if there is any cucumber beetles out at that point of the year. That surround really helps keep them away. 
and maybe keep the surround up later in the season if, uh, if it does become an issue. That really does help with the beetle, I've noticed for sure. But the, the issue then is if you don't do that soon enough and you already have wilt and you have the beetle, it's over at that point. So you need to really be careful. And another suggestion that you could do is if you wanted to grow these things in the ground in rows, I think the only realistic way, the only way to do this even though over there I've had no issues, but you would in a row, in a, in a big field or something, is put them down in a row and cover them with row cover. And that's, that's it. That's the only solution you got um, is using some kind of row cover to protect these plants. And if you're not willing to do that, you sh probably shouldn't grow them, in my opinion, in the ground, or uh, in a row along the ground. You really should put them in a greenhouse setting train them vertically and uh, you'll have a lot less issues to deal with. But again, the trade-off there is more work in trying to get them vertically grown and uh, pruning off all the side shoots and whatnot. So yeah, I don't know, that's, that's kind of the video there, guys. I hope that was a little insightful for those of you guys who are interested. I wish that I knew ex everything I just said this, this spring. <laughs> because uh, it is a big learning process getting these melons going. But we'll, we'll get it next year. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, I've, I've had a reasonable, reasonably good success. Adam, by the way, has had incredible success. So, you know, there's potential. You know, he's looking at per vine that he has on his vertical trellis, like four or five melons. You know, that's pretty nuts. Uh, if I can get four or five melons per vine, growing them vertically, that's four or five melons per square foot because that's how I'm spacing them. That's nuts. That's actually insane. So, um, yeah, I can go on and on about this, I guess, guys. But that's what I wanted to show you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.